Well, I thought I would do a little video about crossband repeating for people that don't know, um, understand that. That's basically where your radio will uh, receive on a UHF or VHF band and then transmit on the other band simultaneously. And it's a it's a pretty cool thing. Lots of times people will use it to uh, have a handheld inside their house if maybe they don't not able to have a, um, a a radio set up inside their house for one reason or another, and they'll use a handheld to communicate to their car, and then their car um, will go out over a local repeater normally um, or simplex. Uh, people will sometimes. Um, use it camping and will set their vehicle up and have somebody go so far one way and people can go so far another way away from their vehicle campsite and they can still communicate farther than what they would just on um, on the handheld <clears throat> so for the purpose of this today typically for operators that see the radio and realize that I don't have a tone um, tone set, I normally would. If I was actually going to use this, I would, um, to, um, to communicate for a, a period of time, I would definitely have a tone set up. Today I'm just doing this to, for the purpose of this video really quick. I've got it on the UHS, UHF Simplex uh, National Calling Frequency and the VHF simplex frequency and on this particular radio you hold these three buttons in look look at the camera now that L flashes and that low means I'm on low power and that low means I'm on low power um, when you're cross band repeating you um, you want to be careful not to um, run too much power because basically your radio is your <laughs> how did somebody explain this to me you know you're putting out 50 watts from the VHF side right over to the UHF side but if I understand radio personally as well as I think I do um, when it's in crossband repeat mode um, and it's actually communicating you're not really putting that in but I could be wrong so now of course let me see here. I've already got the. There you go, simplex. And watch this. K E seven U U M. So it's tra um, this radio here is receiving on this frequency, and it's transmitting on this one. K E seven U U M. Yes, and I am actually already checked for a while before turning on the camera to make sure nobody was using it. So. And here is another radio. Yes, these lovely Bofang radios, I know. Many people are gonna be like, ah, oh, those Bofangs. So, now, can I get all three of these radios into the picture here? I turned the volume down on the mobile. And so, I'd like to show you, transmitting on 146.480. Receiving on this one. KE7UUM testing. And see the changed color and the green lights on saying it's receiving. KE7UUM. KE7UUM. It would help if I turned the volume up though. KE7UUM. Yes, Bofang audio is very weak. I agree. All right. Now, you know something I don't know. My um, Yaesu FT8800 couldn't would not could not transmit once I would put it in the crossband repeat mode. Let's see if this thing does. KE7UUM. Oh, hey. And it didn't. 
Wow, I can switch that. KE7UUM. That's very interesting. Um, let's see here. Channel mode. KE7UUM. So I'm not trans, but I can still use the radio. Well, that's pretty cool to know. Um, anyways, well, let's shut this off. Apparently, I don't know how to shut it off. Um, oh, there it goes. All right, folks. Um, so, yeah. Crash man repeat. It's a pretty cool thing. Um, something else I'd like to chat about really quick is uh, these Bofang radios. As a licensed ham operator, you can use those on uh, ham frequencies. Um, I have um, I have no doubt about that in my mind. Um, apparently, there are some people that say that you can't. Um, if a radio is if a radio is not um, putting out good emissions and bleeding over the place, causing interference, you know, as a ham operator, we're already supposed to know our equipment's, you know, doing that or not doing that and not use it if it is doing that. So I would advise that, yeah, a lot of these Bofang radios are crap. And um, I've heard reports that some of them do. I bought an 8-watt Bofang one time and had to send it back to the factory because it was putting out, you know, like, 2 watts on high power. Um... And regardless of what anybody says, regardless of what you read, I still don't know of this mo to this moment of one of these Bofang radios that legally um, can transmit on MERS, M-U-R-S, um, or GMRS. Um, with that being said. I can get into more depth if anybody wants to contact me and talk about this outside the video. That's fine. I'll go through that. Um, now, with that being said, um, I know a lot of people do use them for that. And there's a big old thing going on right now with the FCC, and they've sent out this letter and um, about um, one, you know, if you're a homeowner and you have somebody operating a, a, an illegal radio out of, on your property, you can get in trouble. Um, and then there's another one. I don't know which one came first, but then there's another one here also recent that <clears throat> talks about using a radio while committing a crime. It's always been illegal. It's always been illegal to use a radio while you're committing a crime. Committing a crime within itself is illegal. Thus, I believe that's why it's called a crime. Um, anyways, I roll, but you can't see my face. And I don't think I can reverse the camera as it's recording. Nope. Apparently not. And I... Um, I'm not telling you... I'm not telling you not to use the radios, because a lot of people are. I've been doing it, and a lot of people have been doing it for years, and they're not getting in trouble, but... Just because you're doing something wrong doesn't mean that it's still um, not illegal or you've been doing it for so long and never got caught. Um, I, uh, I think that's about it. I intend on making more radios, more, excuse me, more and more radios, yeah, more videos about different aspects, different things of ham radio. I mean, if I could <clears throat> get a hold of somebody and actually talk, um, and there's a local frequency, the frequency that a local club in the Valley, Salem, Oregon area here is on, um, W7SAA. But 
anyways, I intend on doing more videos about radios. Um, and go out, get your license. Don't sit here and tell me that you don't care. You're not going to need a license. FCC is not going to care when, you know, blah, blah hits the fan and all that stuff. And <clears throat> I, I got stories I could tell you about the FCC. One, um, that I know of a situation where after I first became a ham, I read of a sto read a story where um, somebody got on and police or fire radio and called for help. Um, the person it was a it was a police. It seems like it was in Southern California. The officer was injured in the car. This driver had drove by, and then an hour later or something, the officer was seen in the same place. There's no cell service in this area. He got on the radio and called. Um, called for help for the officer and the FCC went after him. Um, I don't really know a lot about the story. I mean, there wasn't what, what I read of it. There wasn't a lot of it. So he possibly saved somebody's life and yet he was still being harassed by FCC. Welcome to the W7SEA <clears throat> repeater system. There you go. <clears throat> well, let's see here, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, study, get your license, get on the air, talk, learn how to use a radio, and don't use a radio while you're committing a crime. Have a wonderful day.